All of you, how many of you know King David? I got only one all. <laughs> she is all or best of you are there? Best of you. How many of you know King David? Yeah, all of you. Who is he? Is king? What else? He's a shepherd. What else? He's a musician. Huh? He's a father, he's a son. Okay. Man after God's own heart, that's in the New Testament comment. Yeah, what else is he? He's a king. Right? He's a worshipper. Psalmist. <laughs> he's a psalmist. <laughs> that's a nice word. What else is he? Is he a priest? Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes, he's a priest. What else is he? What else is he? Let's turn to Acts 2, 29 and 30. Let's see what the Bible has to say about uh, uh, a new David. Right? Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of uh, Patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried and his tomb is with us today. Therefore, therefore, being a prophet, Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ. He would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. Read. Please read. Mura Pushida the Gavin Ruchi Mido Nino, Dharam Gavata Ruchu. At the Chadipoi, Samar Chevrin. At the Samadhi, Niki Varkuma Matio Nadi. At the Pravata Union Kanuka. At the Kerpa Farmano Ruti. At the Raymond Pravata Union. He was a prophet also. So please know, David is a prophet. Okay? Continue. At the Kerpa Farmano Ruti, at the Simhasa Mumida. Okani Kuchuna Betu. Ali Devodu Parato, Pramana Purunga, Utu Pilkuna Sangati, Atadeniki, Christu Pataramlo, Vido Padale than you, Aya Shiram Kulipule than you, Davi Mundaga Telskoni, Dairo Mundaga Telskoni. Please read the verse, uh, the following verse. Therefore, uh, uh, he foreseen, that means he saw before, right? Foreseen this spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ that is that his soul was not left in Hades nor did his nor did his flesh see corruption. David saw into the future and he for he foreseen he spoke about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Listen that is why he is also called the prophet. Please know each one of us each one of us, he was a, what, what was David? He was a king, he was a priest, he was a prophet also. He was a king, priest and a prophet. Please note, each believer has the same function. Every believer. You and me, everyone sitting here. You have the same function of a, of a king, of a priest and of a prophet. Say, I am a king. A, king. a priest. And the prophet. And the prophet. Right? Each one of you, I'll tell you, and I want each one of you to understand this. Pratyokadu, Raju, Yajikudu, Pravakta Yunaru. Every believer. This is what I want you to understand. If you live, church, please listen to this. If you live a, a life that is bound, when Jesus has set you free, you will live like a slave. I'll again tell you. If you live bound, even after he set you free, even after he set you, he set you free. Did Jesus set you free? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Then you cannot. Don't live a bound life. Don't live a bound life. Cultivate the word laga unakuru. Express, be free, and live in the freedom. Why? Because Jesus set you free. Every month. He set you free. 
Say, He set me free. He set me free. Right? And don't live like a slave. Don't live like a slave. Please, please know this. The Holy Spirit is, is inside every believer. Yes or no? Yes. Is Holy Spirit inside you? Yes. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. And the uh, Bible tells Father, the Almighty God, is jealous about the Holy Spirit that is inside you. And please know, because the Holy Spirit is inside every believer, every believer, Holy Spirit is inside every believer because Holy Spirit is inside every believer, right? He can have a, a living and a, a continuous communication with God because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So none of us can say God is far away from me. No, He is Emmanuel. He is near to us. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that's how, how close is your body to you? How close is your body to you? That close is God to you. Because he said the spirit of God lives inside. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right? James 4, 5. I'll give you the verses. Please take notes. Take this verse. Or do you think the scripture says in vain? The spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. What does it say? The spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. Please know, this is the Holy Spirit that dwells in each one of us. And uh, if the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside you, which demonic power can separate you from God? Can any demonic power separate you from God? No. Is any demon stronger than the Holy Spirit? No. no. Yes or no? No. No. Right? So, no power or no demon can separate you from being close to God. No, nothing can separate you. Remember it is the Holy Spirit and each one of us need to live with this revelation. The Spirit of God is inside me. Nothing can separate me from the from, from God or nothing can separate me from praying to God. Nothing can separate you. That is the understanding I want everyone to have that. And once this understanding is there, then you will always like to communicate with God. Talk to Him. Communicate with Him. Pray and worship Him. When you do not realize this, that the Spirit of God is inside you, it's then that the thing starts getting diluted. And Satan always tries to uh, deceive you, telling God is far away from you. Right? No, he is as close as body is to you. That's how close he is. So, Romans 6, 1 to 4. Let's see what, is, what the, the scripture say. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we, how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many as us were baptized into Christ, into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried in him through baptism into death, that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Likewise, also reckon yourself dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please understand this very clearly. It's, it's like this. Jesus died as me. You must understand these points. Jesus died as me. Jesus rose again as me. He rose again. He died as me. And he rose again as me. Right? He gave us the Holy Spirit. Who, see, who raised up Jesus from the dead? Who raised up Jesus from the dead? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Who raised you up? The same Spirit that, Je that raised Jesus up is the same Spirit that raised you up. You died and you rose again. Jesus died, He rose again. Holy Spirit raised Him up and the Holy Spirit raised you up. Same Spirit. There is no other Holy Spirit. There is only one spirit. And that is the privilege. 
God did not use some other spirit to raise Jesus and some other spirit to raise us. No, he used the same Holy Spirit to raise us all up. So this is, needs to be understood. This needs to be understood. The conclusion is, I am dead to sin. Read uh, verse 11, Romans uh, 6, verse 11. Uh, did you download that? Romans 6, verse 11. So, what do you say? Me to Papa Visha, my Rutulgano, Deo Visha, my Papa Visha, my Rutulgano, Rutulgano. Please understand this. Right? Today I want to name title of my message is selfie. It's selfie. Right? My self image. Selfie and self. self image. Right? I hold the camera, I look into it and click. Right? This is my self. What is your self image? Your self-image is Romans 6, 11. This must be your self-image. What is your self-image? This is it. Is it 11th, 11th verse? He says, the, the, he says, likewise, you also reckon yourself dead indeed to sin. Dead. Say, I am dead to sin. I am dead to sin. This is my self-image. Say it. Where are your friend? This is my self-image. Right? That I am dead to sin. I'm that I am dead to sin. I'm this is this is it. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. This is my self-image. Why I don't sin? I'm dead to it. Right? Akademanri, you reckon yourself. Then what happens? Sin is that becomes reality to you. That starts working in your body. Then you will be able to resist or see it's like this. Last time as I have told you. Why I don't sin is I don't like it. Right? There is nothing in me that likes to sin. And that is what is the truth. And this will be. Once you reckon yourself. I am dead to sin. If you conclude in your mind. I am dead to sin. That is why I don't sin. This is the reason. That becomes your reality. Chala mandi, ne ne papa mulo padi kotha ne mo, padi kotha ne mo, padi kotha ne mo. Aal bhi dente, aal 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 sin, aame commit sin, aame commit sin, aame commit sin. Why? Why are you afraid that you will commit commit sin? Because Bible tells you are dead indeed. You died for it. So why are you afraid? I'm telling you, Jesus was not afraid to sit down with sinners. Why? Because there is no intention. There is nothing in him that wanted to sin. That's why I'm telling you, each one of you, each one of us, if you reckon yourselves to be dead, indeed to sin, that's how you'll be. Once you, once you know this truth, that's how you'll be. You will never be afraid of sin again. The reason you will be, you will not be afraid of sin is because that is what Bible tells, that is the testimony of Bible about you. That is the testimony of Bible about you. The test, what is the testimony of Bible? The testimony of the Bible about you is you are dead to sin and alive in Christ. And alive in Christ. So what's your self-image? Dead to sin. What's your self-image? Dead to sin. Say dead to sin. Dead to sin. That's what I said when you take the camera and take a selfie, this should come out. Dead to sin. Dead to sin. I'm dead to sin. <coughs> To Say I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to sin. What we have to do is adjust our thinking according to the word of God. I'm telling you church, again listen to this. You have to adjust your thinking according to the word of God. The word of God is uh, cannot be adjusted to anything. It's perfect, it's pure, it's flawless. There is no mistake in the word of God. And if there is a mistake in you, you have to change and you have to correct. The nature of the Holy Spirit is the king is a, is a, the, the the nature of the Holy Spirit is the nature of the kingdom of God. By the tells in Romans 14, 17, it says the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Right? 
let me explain to you again neeti samadhanamu parishuddhaatmalo aanandamu malli chettanu vinandi neeti samadhanamu parishuddhaatmalo aanandamu neeti parishuddhaatmalo undi samadhanamu parishuddhaatmalo undi dan tarata aanandamu parishuddhaatmalo undi please understand righteousness is in the holy spirit peace is in the holy spirit joy is in the holy spirit you have heard me telling many times to you the same thing and this is the kingdom of god for the kingdom of god is not eating and drinking but what is the kingdom of god righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit is the kingdom of god and the holy spirit is where where is the holy spirit where is the holy spirit the kingdom of god is inside you the kingdom of god is the kingdom of god is inside me the kingdom of god is in church bible tells this is the kingdom of god righteousness peace joy in the holy spirit and the holy spirit is inside you where is the kingdom of god inside me it's here in me is the kingdom of god so please know now this has to start manifesting irritate about it the life with the holy spirit needs to manifest it needs to come out none of us can stand before god and say that i don't know what the kingdom of god is nobody can say because bible tells the testimony of each one of you each one of us the bible is you are the temple of god that means what you are having the kingdom inside you now you refuse to use it you refuse to fellowship with the holy spirit that is the problem nothing else is the problem పరిశుద్ధాత్మ దేవుడు ఎవరితో అయితే దేవుడి రాజ్యం ఉందో ఆయనతో సహవాసం చేయడానికి మనం నిరాకరిస్తే అది మన తప్పు దేవుడిది కాదు బికాస్ గాడ్ హ్యాస్ గివెన్ టు ఈచ్ వన్ టు ఈచ్ వన్ గాడ్ హ్యాస్ గాడ్ హ్యాస్ గాడ్ హ్యాస్ గివెన్ దేర్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ ఇన్ హెవెన్ దట్ ఇస్ సెపరేటెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ దేవుడి దేవుడి రాజ్యం రాజ్యము పరిశుద్ధాత్మలో ఉంది ఆ రెండింటిని విడతీయలేదు యు కెనాట్ సెపరేట్ సో ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఇన్ ద కింగ్డమ్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఇస్ కనెక్టెడ్ ఈజ్ ఇన్ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ రైట్ దట్ ఈస్ వై హీ హస్ గివెన్ టు ఈచ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ఆఫ్ అస్ ఐ కీప్ రిపీటింగ్ దిస్ టిల్ ఐ ఫినిష్ ద మెసేజ్ ఇన్ హెవెన్ దేర్ ఆర్ నో షాడోస్ ఇన్ హెవెన్ దేర్ ఆర్ నో షాడోస్ why there are no shadows because he is shining equally on everyone and everywhere please know when god has given you his holy spirit to you and to me he is shining equally over each one of us there is no partiality right it is that we are not giving access or we are not opening our lives to the holy spirit it's the same holy spirit in you in me it's the same holy spirit and he is the same holy spirit in jesus christ so please know when you live in this reality you get to know what heaven is like when you live in this reality when i live in the reality that the holy spirit is in me and this reality when i start living right then you will know and i will know what heaven is like so please know this and uh, what happens and then the commitment to serve him will keep increasing then when you live in the reality that the holy the holy the kingdom is in the holy spirit holy spirit is in me then once the the commitment to serve him will start increasing otherwise you will uh, what you what you will do will be more to satisfy your ego and not service and call it service i'm telling you if you don't realize this whatever you do you know people come and uh, they they move the chairs like this and he says no, no you see i put the chairs correctly they come and touch the projector and then just adjust it he says what do you do i serve the kingdom of god like did everyone see right what i am doing and uh, you want recognition of people right you want recognition the people who look for recognition have not really understood they not understood what the kingdom of god is like any servant right when you want to serve serve irrespective of uh, the recognition part of it 
right? You serve. God is the one whom you are serving. God will recognize every service that is rendered to Him. Every service. So please know, please know this. If you are looking for my attention, if you are looking for people's attention, you are not serving at all. You are disqualified. You are disqualified. So don't do anything in the church to impress anyone. Even me. Right? I'm a look, I'm a not look. Right? And when you do something in the church, you are doing for the Lord. So I, 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 I may, I may not appreciate you. But if you're looking for my appreciation, you're not serving. Because the moment I say, Prakash, you've done a great job, you got your reward. Why you want God to bless it? You got your reward. Right? So please know, you are serving and you don't expect any appreciation from me. Right? And then if I, if I appreciate you, that doesn't hinder your reward. You already get it from God because you're not looking for my reward at all. Adi Sevanta. That is service. When the Spirit of God, God comes upon a person who is not fruitful, he becomes fruitful. Why? In kingdom, everybody is fruitful. Everyone. I'm telling you, church, listen. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will be fruitful. You will be fruitful. Why? You are, now you have to realize. Now you have to ask questions. I believe in practical Christianity. You have to learn from Jesus and apply it in daily life. Ask God. What is it that hinders my me being fruitful? Fruit, uh, fruitful. What hinders my fruitfulness? Ask God. Ask God. And I would expect each one of you to ask, ask God the question. What is it God? If the Spirit of God comes upon me, you said righteousness, peace and joy and the kingdom of God has come upon me. I must be fruitful. I'm telling you, if you are married, you need the, your womb to be blessed. This is, the, this is what I'm telling you. I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? You will be fruitful in your marriage. You will be fruitful in your job. You will be fruitful in your business. You will be fruitful in your home. You will be fruitful if you are a student. You must be. When you realize God, the kingdom of God is in, is in me. I cannot be a loser. Because there is nobody who loses in the kingdom of God. No one. The moment the kingdom of God is in you, you become an attraction. You become attracted to everything that uh, makes you fruitful and uh, makes you a better testimony. So please know, please know this. Hey, this is the kingdom of reality and I want each one to practice that. Every one of you. When the Spirit of God comes upon a person, he who is not fruitful becomes fruitful. A person who is uh, having torment mentally, who is tormented mentally, who is uh, not having, uh, uh, when the Spirit of God comes upon him, he releases the person from torment and gives him peace. Why? Because the Spirit of God is peace. The kingdom is righteousness, peace and joy. Right? That all, all everything is there in the Holy Spirit. He brings peace because that is the part of the kingdom. You don't have peace. Many of us, we don't, we don't have peace. It's like this. Uh, if God has given you peace, yes or no? Yes. When He has given you the kingdom, He has given you peace. No, I lost my peace. Yeah, that's exactly the right word. You lost your peace. So what do you have to do when you lose something? When you lose something, what do you do? What do you do? Search for it. Right? Search for it. I come home and I shout at my wife and my children and my and, and everybody in the house. I, I shout. Right? Is that peaceful? No. no. Then I realize God has given me peace. Now, where did I lose it? I take a step back. I take back. Right? I go back. Something happened in the traffic. 
right? Somebody got, somebody did nothing. I just lost everything, right? I just get, I come home and then what I took from the traffic incident, I come and uh, what do you do? What I do? I throw it on my family, right? I took something from the traffic that does not belong to the kingdom of God that belongs to this kingdom, I have taken that and dumped it on, a, on, on my family. I carried it with, with me and I dumped it on my family. Listen, now if that is the possibility, the possibility and the truth is that God has given you his peace and you are, must be the one who is carrying the peace with you. Right? Because he has already given. You cannot say that God has not given you peace because Bible tells that he has given you. Right? And if I have to believe, if someone comes and tells me, I lost my peace, I will tell them, go and search for it. Right? The truth is, God has given you. You lost it, search for it and get it back. It will be there where you lost it. It will exactly be there where you lost it. Go back and take it back. That's what repentance does. When you ask God for forgiveness, He return, He what is what is happening to you? He's, he restores you. He takes you to the place where where you have lost it and shed some. That is where you lost it. He said, repent and reconcile to get back your peace. Hope that is clear, right? Now, in the very famous verse, I want to explain this very carefully. Please listen. Uh, Matthew six. So, read it again. Consider yourselves. This is your selfie. This is your self image. You must know that this is true. Why? Because Bible tells you are dead to your sins. You cannot say, I'm, I, I am I'm alive for sin. No, you are not. You are a liar if you say that. Right? Consider yourselves dead to sin. Let's turn to Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33. What does it say, Matthew 6 33? Very famous. The kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, is righteousness separated from the kingdom of God? What does it say? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Agreemundi? Devudi Rajani? Devudi Rajani? Neeti, Neeti, separate out. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? Why is he separating the uh, uh, separating the righteousness? Or here, please understand: the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The stress is on righteousness. The stress is on the, the emphasis is on righteousness. Why is the emphasis on righteousness? I'll tell you. Can you look at a person and say whether he is joyful or sad? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, person you choose, Anandanga Unnada Leidan Chapadalama Chapalama. Can you say? Yes. Look at a person, he is joyful. Can you look at a person and say whether he is peaceful or he is disturbed? Can you look and say? Yes or no? Yes. Can you look at a person and say whether he is righteous or not? No. No. Right? You will have to have different other things to find out whether he is righteous or not. Now that is what God is telling about. Your righteousness is your position. Right standing with God. That is what he is telling. Focus on your right standing with God. When you focus on right standing, see the joy and people will see that you are peaceful. People will know. That will be your testimony. The testimony will be, be in right standing with God and the testimony will be that you will be joyful and people people will see and tell, hey, this person is joyful, this person is peaceful. You understand? This, is, this position is what peace and joy can be felt. Can, can you feel righteousness? Can you feel peace? Yes or no? Yes. Can you feel joy? Yes. You must be dead if you don't feel. Can you feel joy? Yes. Yes. Can you feel righteousness? Can you feel righteousness? Right? Now that comes by faith. That is the testimony of God to you. He says, the blood of Jesus Christ has made you, given you the provision to be righteous, your position. 
is guaranteed. Now, in that guarantee, when you start believing that that I, the blood of Jesus Christ, Jesus has made me righteous. That is the truth. Many of us don't don't believe in that truth. Why? Because we want to feel righteousness, and we don't feel righteousness. Neethi manu age yaran kunda manu manu taaki chuda yaran kunda mani thi ne. Adi chuda den kabate samadhana ne manu ananda ne korbo thuna. But when you believe in this is what the God talks about, then you will feel peace and joy. Then most of us struggle because we want to feel righteousness. You want to feel righteousness. You have to believe the testimony of God that God has made you righteous, and then what happens? The the result of that would be peace and joy. Please understand, church. This is a very very important. When the, when Jesus is telling about the Matthew six thirty three, he is talking about focus on your position. Focus on your position. When you are facing a torment. Mentally, when things are not happening right in your life, when when things seek the kingdom, seek the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Why he brings you first? He tells you that you are a son and a daughter of God. Second, he will let you enjoy the peace and uh, and 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 joy. You and I need to enjoy His kingdom. Please know, you and I need to what? Enjoy His kingdom. Mark one nine. Mark one nine. Quickly, we go to the sir. Mark one nine. What does it say? It is talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want you to uh, know. Then uh, it came to pass in those days that Jesus. Um, you didn't take him. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of uh, Galilee. And was baptized by John in the Jordan. Oh no! I want to tell. Uh, there are some prayers that even I prayed, and there is a song that I recommended also that uh, uh, that uh, that we we sing. Two uh, bade or my gadu gadu, right? You John prayed a famous prayer. What did he pray? He prayed that God, you increase and I. Can we pray that prayer? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Can we pray the prayer? I stand before you and tell uh, no. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why uh, it is a difficult prayer to pray. What does it say? John was the one when Jesus came down to uh, came to bat, uh, uh, to John for baptism. What did he say? Uh, John baptized me. Yes or no? What did John say? What did John say? John, am I right? Am I right? You should be baptizing me. Another level. No, who? Not to baptize me, boy. Anna, none of that. None of that. You are the one who should baptize. Just go back a, a, a little. And what did John say when he saw Jesus Christ? He says, "Behold the." Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, right? And he also said, "He is the one who comes after me will baptize me in, in fire and in the in the Holy Spirit. He is the one who is coming after me, and he is the one who will baptize you in Holy Spirit and fire." So when Jesus comes face to face with John, John knows that he is a prophet. He has prophesied, Jesus, you are supposed to baptize me. Neela Munshan Kado, Parishad Bhatmalo, Nuvuna ko baptism me. Why? Because he is talking about that baptism, right? He is talking about that. You are supposed to baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now you are coming to me for being baptized into by the by the water. Is then Jesus says, let it be so to fulfill all righteousness. So what is what is John telling? See, once. John was the greatest prophet, right? Until the Old Testament. In all of the Old Testament, John was the greatest prophet. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Jesus says. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. That's why. Now please know. 
once now because you are in the new testament now you have received the holy spirit yes or no yes. you received the kingdom of god in old testament it was not possible hello in old testament it that was not possible now john prayed from here he says god you must increase and i must decrease now here you are as a believer you receive the holy spirit now how much can you go down in can take it like that can you go down talk to me talk to me can you go down more than that? no it's a good thought or a manchi aalochana de you must increase and i must decrease but john prayed that prayer before right before that baptism by in, in, in the water after receiving the holy spirit please understand i'll tell you i'm not teaching a new doctrine i'll tell you something also jesus said you are the light did he say yes you are the light you are the light of the world chapter 2 yes he said you are the light now he is the origin of light and you are the light he says go into the world he also said you are the salt did he say that yes yes, yes. he said you are the salt did jesus tell this to anyone in the old testament did he tell anyone no now tell me now what has to happen i will tell you what has to happen john is uh, referred as the greatest of among all the old testament prophet but the least in the kingdom of god is greater than him so please no church the right prayer that you need to pray is god manifest through me i'm surrendering manifest me na dwara nu theeru manifest now in that way in that way you can say let the kingdom manifest right it is a good thought that he must increase but i must decrease but if you observe it from this part part of it what needs to happen is what needs to happen is god manifest your life not my life but your life you already gave the kingdom to me let this kingdom manifest that that must be if you pray with that understanding you can say it is good but you have to know that the, the difference is this the difference is now you are praying for a much better and a greater prayer than than john you are in a position that is a, that that makes you the temple of the holy spirit now also the baptism did john receive the baptism which jesus promised no he didn't right here ah uh, now jesus baptizes you in the holy spirit and most of you are baptized in the holy spirit this is the baptism that uh, that john was john prophesied and he was waiting for but now that is the baptism that you have received already right i want to let's come let's just is that clear yes yes clear yes is or no yes any doubts no you can ask me any doubts let's do it as a study today any doubts you have ask now because we are going to go further in this you have any doubt doubt no okay i i believe that if you say that you have any doubt the children of israel left egypt with the blood on their doorposts right on the doorposts before they left our uh, egypt the blood was on the doorposts of uh, of israel every one of their homes they left with that they 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 were under the blood when the angel of death passed over them then they left the left the homes and then started walking right they were walking bible tells in first corinthians 10:2 first corinthians 10:2 they were all baptized into moses in the cloud and in the sea they were all baptized they were baptized into what they were baptized into what more work tell to all were baptized 
Okay, they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Why Moses? They were baptized into Moses. Moses was a picture of Jesus Christ that time. He was the one who was delivering them out of that. And see, now there is there is a difference in this baptism. I want to see. I want to tell you. Now sea is stagnant or flowing. Flowing. Samudramu pravahistunda nilchna nila. Come on, why is it so difficult to answer? Is it stagnant or flowing? Stagnant. Stagnant. Right? It is stagnant water. Sea doesn't flow anywhere. Does it flow? No. Oh, doesn't flow anywhere. Right? So see, but before they entered into the promised land, before they entered, they were also had to pass through river Jordan. Now it is a river. Vagdana Pradeshin Loki Vadu Local Pradeshin Shan Kante Mundara Vadu Denkro Baptism this Kunaru Pravahinche Nadilo Yordan Lo Vadu Baptism this Kunaru. Please understand the Holy Spirit is what? River or sea? River. River. He always wants to flow. Now the kingdom of God, when do you do that? The kingdom of God is when you are baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit. You have the, 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 the encounter with the Holy Spirit is a must. And what does Holy Spirit do? When He is inside you, He is not stagnant. He wants to flow. Right? He is a river. Bible tells, out of your belly shall flow rivers of a living water. Right? Out of your belly. Please know, the Holy Spirit inside you would always like to flow from you. Touching the lives of people. So you cannot say, my life can be, uh, my life cannot be a testimony. Your life will be a testimony. Your life will be a testimony. Every one of you, the Spirit of God inside you is like a river. It's not a sea. It is like a, He is like a river. And every one of you, that means what? The kingdom of God that God has given inside you in the form, in the, in the Holy Spirit will always like to flow. And you have to allow that life. If you believe that life, your life will always be less tonight. It will touch people's life, it will, it will affect, have an influence over people's life and you will be a testimony. You cannot say no to it because the one inside you is a river, is not a stagnant person. So your life will be continuously improving, your life will be continuously flowing, you will live, you will, your life will continuously be a testimony. Amen? Amen. Why am I explaining this? We need to see, we need to see the influence of kingdom of God in every broken situation. That is what I want to see in each one of you. If you say that no, I cannot stand and, uh, and, uh, and talk about the gospel of God, you are a liar. <coughs> if you say that you cannot be a testimony, you are a liar. If you say you cannot talk about the kingdom of God, you are a liar. Why? The Bible tells about a different testimony about you. It says the Spirit of God is a river that is inside you, always flowing, always refreshing people. Always. Always refreshing people. If you can you how much salt water can you drink? How much sweet water can you drink? That's the difference. That's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Please know this law was heavy. Unable to bear. Now Spirit of God makes us joyful carriers of His presence. You are able to do the same thing. What the, uh, what the people in the Old Testament were not able to do. Why? Because now the Spirit of God that empowers you is inside you. And you are able to do. Right there, the temple was at a distance. And they had to go to the temple. Now you are the temple. Going into different places. Going into different places. If you see, I am telling you church. If you see a poverty, people having financial struggles, you see them rebuke the spirit of poverty in them. Rebuke that, break that spirit of poverty in them. You do it. Don't wait for anybody else. You have the power because why? You have the kingdom of God inside you. In the kingdom of God there is no poverty. So when you say, when you meet the spirit of poverty, when you meet the spirit of unclean spirits, now you have the kingdom. Break that influence over them. Don't wait for somebody else. Break it. 
If you see oppression anywhere, break it. Why you have the kingdom and the, king, the kingdom when the kingdom of God is against, comes against anything else that will have to be destroyed and the kingdom will flow. Just pray, Spirit of God, flow through me. And you will have the influence of the kingdom of God dominating over everything else in your own in your own circle. That's how you need to move forward. Each one of us need to move forward like that. It is when you are afraid. It is when you are afraid. Because they, that's why I'm telling you, condition your mind, your thoughts according to what Bible talks about you. Condition your mind. We have to condition our thinking according to what Bible tells about the thinking. Not your own thoughts. But what? That's why don't think with your uh, with your thoughts, with your mind. Don't think with your with your mind. Please know. Think with the word of God. They would walk in Toti Avachin Chalmanu. Manaman Surkar. So please, please know. Matthew 27. Verse 50, 51, the baptism of Jesus Christ, what does it say, see? When uh, Jesus was baptized, what happened? Quickly, what happened when Jesus was baptized? He was went into the water, came up, the heavens were? The heavens were what? The heavens were open and what happened? The Spirit of God came down, right? The, now let's see, Matthew 27. Matthew 27, verse 50 and 51. See, the baptism of Jesus Christ once he came up was not a cute painting. Right? The clouds slowly moved away and the, the dove coming slowly and coming on Jesus Christ. Is that the picture that you have in mind? Be honest. Are they going to Jesus baptized baptism basically by the Grangane, Akadakuni, Meghalune, Melaga Meghalaga Jerry Penny, Power of Melaga Punish Pine Churchy, than we begin with. Now be honest, are they pictured in the level? Yes. Is that the picture that you have? Yes. Let's see what happens. For 15. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He gave up his spirit. What happened after that? 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn into two. What happened? From the from top to the bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks split. And the rocks split and the graves were opened and many of the bodies were saved. This is a violent act that took place. Please understand. The heavens were what? Torn open. They didn't, it is not that cute uh, clouds uh, move, moving at all. The heaven was torn open. Listen. I'll tell you something. Now you are inside. Okay? You are inside a room. And the room is locked outside, from outside. It is it is locked. Now you have to come out. What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? Break the break the door and then and then what? And then what? Come on, right? Please understand this picture. Same thing. It is the the wheel that was there. It is that thick, six inches thick curtain. It was stone from top to bottom, from God's side to ours. And then what happened? He came out to be with one us, breaking every religious system. Right? Till today, if you see, in every temple, God is locked from outside and then when people go out. Yes or no? Yes. What happened that time? The temple, the, the curtain was torn open and then he came out. He, came, he, came out. he says, enough of the religious systems. Now I will dwell with each one. I will dwell with each one. There will be a passage. There will be a, a communication. There will be a, a living together. With, the, with with my people, that is that is what happened. So what what happened here? He says the rock. The same word is used. Bible tells that uh, that that uh, the, uh, the the heavens were torn apart, right? When the spirit of God came. Uh, please know why this was uh, why this is important. This is how it was when the when uh, when the heavens opened and the spirit came down. That is how it was. 
So please know every every time every religious activity that is that is that needs to be broken needs to be broken. It needs to be broken. God is moving out of that religious things where where He was uh, you know put behind some somewhere. He has come out into the open to be with one each one of us. Why is this that we are discussing? Because we somehow got into a religious mindset, right? That the, the kingdom of God is somewhere and one day I will go there, right? The, king, the Holy Spirit is somewhere else and the kingdom of God is separate and the Holy Spirit is separate. No, it is one. There is nothing in the kingdom of God that is separated from the Holy Spirit. They are all in the same. The nature of the Holy Spirit is the nature of the kingdom of God. This is what I want to explain. Now, how can how can Jesus take water baptism? How can Jesus take water baptism? That's a question that many people many people have. There were different explanations that were given to that how the uh, Jesus could take water baptism. Please understand, Jesus took the water baptism for one reason because uh, when you are interceding. Okada Osama Nubu uh Nubu Pratana just now they know angels now while as Han Lokeli no Pratana just now. Yes or no? Right? Jesus became sin for us. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah? He became. Now, because he is the intercessor, he is praying on our behalf. Right? He became one of us. He became one of us. And uh, that is the reason he gets into my shoes and uh, he prays like I would pray. That is, uh, that is how Jesus did. This is exactly the Holy Spirit does. Romans 8, 26 and 28. What does Holy Spirit do? He prays with groans and moans. Why? Because to, over, to help me overcome my weaknesses. Who is groaning? Who is praying? Let's see. Uh, Romans 8 verse 26. 26, 27, 28, we will read. Now, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. How? For we do not know what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Who makes intercession for us? The Spirit of God. Why? Because He, is, uh, he does the same thing what Jesus does for us. And the big and from inside us, he is uh, he is pray, praying. That is that is what Jesus. Uh, that is what the Spirit of God does. And uh, last time I told you, if you are having any weaknesses, you need to know and uh, and access the Spirit of uh, of uh, of God. Get access to the Spirit of God and fellowship with the Spirit of God. And then what happens? You will overcome your weaknesses. How many of you have weaknesses? Nobody. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? Pray. pray. Align yourself with the Spirit of God and pray. Then what happens? You become an overcomer. I'm telling you, all of us have weaknesses. Every one of us. The only way we can overcome is by the Holy Spirit. And there is no other way that you can overcome or, or uh, there is no other way that God has put that you can overcome. Right? And uh, so God tears the veil and comes out to be available to all of us. He could only do that when Jesus died. And once Jesus died, He made Himself available to all of us. He made Himself available to all of us. Today, when we partake of the communion, be grateful for the torn flesh of Jesus Christ that made you receive the grace and come boldly into the presence of God and ask for timely help a kindly help. Please understand, that is why don't be satisfied in a life that you can achieve by your talents. Don't be satisfied with a life that you can achieve by your talents. Don't be satisfied. Aim for a life that you can achieve with the anointing. Malishatam, ni talan toti, ni balan toti, ni kuna, nai punyata toti, sadinche vatikurinchi no aspadagu. Because the ones, the thing that you achieve with the anointing of the Holy Spirit will always be far superior and greater than what you can achieve with your talents. That is what you should aim for. That is the life that you aim for. Right? You can achieve so much with your talents, 
right? People are satisfied with this life. You know how well I can play, you know how well I can speak, you know how well I can talk, you know how well I can do the work, right? You are satisfied with your talents, right? But always aim for, the, uh, aim for what you can do with your anointing, right? I am going to see somebody in poverty, be the Tanantoti Unnapadu, when I see somebody who is not fruitful, when I see somebody who is not, who is oppressed by the devils, now in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against that and set him free. That is the life that you should aim for. You, that, that is not talent. You can achieve that only. You can influence life and bring people out of darkness with the anointing. You cannot do it with your talent. You cannot do it with your talent. Please no. I'm not telling that talents are not good. Once God breathes on the talent, that becomes what is natural will become supernatural. Whatever talent that you have, ask God to anoint that talent. What happens? What natural things that you have as a talent will become supernatural. That will become supernatural. Right? That will become supernatural. That is what uh, look look for that kind of uh, that kind of life. Jesus said to Paul, uh, Jesus said to the disciples, you will do greater things than me. Right? You will do greater things than me. Now, people come and touched Jesus' clothes. Yes or no? Yes. And they were healed. Yes. Right? Now, when it came to Paul, his clothes went and touched people's lives and they got healed. They didn't come to come and touch his clothes. His clothes went out and once they touched, there was deliverance. That is a great thing. Right? Because who said you will do greater things? Jesus said you will do greater things. He told all of us, you will do greater things than what I did. So aim for that. God, you did all these things that are absolutely fine. Great. Right? Now I want to do greater things than this. Because you said it. Now, what is my, as we come to closure, what is my relation to the Holy Spirit? This is the question. It's, uh, I want everyone to answer this question. Answer this to yourself. What is my relation, my personal relation with the Holy Spirit? Listen church, it's my prayer that every one of you is fruitful in your own life. That's my prayer and I will see this happen. Every one of you fruitful in your prayer. Fruitful in your life. Right? Whatever that you are doing, whatever business that you are doing, whatever work that you are doing, I want each one to be fruitful. Your secret depends on your relation to the Holy Spirit. That's the, that's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God. The question, but the, what is my relation with the Holy Spirit is the question that needs to be answered by yourself. What is my relation? What is my relation? How much does God trust you? Trust you. See, please know you are living under an uh, open heaven. Right? Many people talk about. Uh, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll tell that when, when in, in our next. Week. Wherever there is loss, wherever there is death, wherever there is um, destruction, you take your stand and pray. Why? The devil comes to steal. If someone steals from you, you have a loss, right? Devil comes to kill. When someone kills, there is death. Devil comes to destroy. When, when someone destroys destruction, right? But you are the one God is looking for and has anointed to come in between. Wherever there is a loss, right? You fill the gap, right? You fill the gap. Please understand. The kingdom of God is within you. You have the power. Now, start trusting on the spirit of God that is inside you. Start trusting and, on the, and realize that the kingdom of God is inside you. Is inside you. And then also believe the people who have faced loss. The people who have faced destruction. Right? 
I have the river. Now, if you hold back that river, right? It is a criminal. It is criminal if you hold back that river from flow from from flowing. Huh? We have seen uh, that uh, the river Kaveri and uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu facing a lot of problems. Why they want to stop the river? He says you cannot stop it. How can you stop it? How can you stop that river? I'm telling you, it is crime to stop the river from flowing. God will ask you the question. Every one of you, including me, he will ask the question: Why are you stopping that river from flowing? Why? Why are you stopping? If someone has anxiety and they, see, it's like this. Uh, if someone comes into the room who has bitterness, right? Who has bitterness and anger inside? When he walks into the room, can you feel? Yes or no? Right? You will suddenly ask. Someone comes into the room, you find heaviness, bitterness. You can feel that. Right? You can feel that. You can feel that. Why you can feel? Please understand this uh, church very, 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 uh, very correctly. Because the bitterness is on them, in them. Right? You can feel the bitterness. You can feel the bitterness. Right? It, you can feel the bitterness. Now, if the bitterness is in me, right? Let's assume this. If the bitterness is in me, why am I bitter? Why am why I am I'm hating? Let's say I hate Emmanuel. Right? Now, the bitterness is on me. When I walk into the room, there is bitterness on me. Right? People can feel the bitterness. Can they feel the bitterness on Emmanuel? No. They can feel the bitterness on me. Please understand, if you have bitterness, people can feel you. You have the bitterness. I told you in the Bible study also. If I drink now, I have the bitterness. If I drink poison, who will die? Emmanuel will die or I will die? Who will die? I will die. Right? Because why I am drinking this? So, understand this. If you have bitterness inside your heart, right? It is you who suffer. Because what happens, you have bitterness, but there is sweet water inside you, right? There is a, always a struggle. The Spirit of God will not have, the, will not entertain the, uh, the, the bitterness. And there will always be struggle. And if there is a struggle inside you, you will not have any peace, right? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy. You are supposed to maintain that in your, in your own life. You are supposed to maintain, maintain that. And then what happens? People will, 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 get, will get that. Will, will get that. In the atmosphere uh, of His world, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the world of the Holy Spirit, uh, in the Kingdom of God, everything changes to be good. Everything changes to be good. I want, uh, I want to be where He is. And we use our faith for a lot of things. We use our faith for healings and miracles and prayer, etc. How about using the faith to know Him? Right? Manam pradhan jesthe bolu viswasam to pradhan jastham. Devda na telsu mitha unte na jepe sam. Adi viswasam na thana ni telsu kodam kendu kodamu. Why can't you use the same faith to know Him better? Why can't you use the same faith to know Him better? Church, it's time that each one of us grow. He is not just a, a Holy Spirit for comforting and counseling, but He is also the uh, Holy Spirit that who would flow from you and uh, touch everyone. Right? See, uh, why I told about uh, uh, the prayer of John, you increase, I decrease, uh, understand, understand this very, very carefully. Now, you have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Right? Matthew. Matthew was writing the letter to a Jew. Yes or no? What is the first miracle that Matthew writes about? Jesus touching a leper. Right? It is forbidden for a Jew to touch a leper. But he is writing exactly that. Matthew has his own uniqueness. God wants you to have your uniqueness completely. And in your uniqueness, he is going to work in that uniqueness. That means he will. That's why don't try to copy others. Don't try to imitate others. 
while playing music, while worshipping, while living, while doing the work, while doing something, while preaching, don't try to uh, copy somebody. Be original. Right? Be, be original. And then in the original, in the original that you have, in the original that you are, and God will use you uniquely. When you come to Mark, Mark is a businessman. Right? He's a businessman, so he compresses everything like that. Like one, two, three, four, one, and then he completes the whole gospel in 16 chapters. He completes it. Right? He's, he's to the point. Why? He's a businessman. And God used his unique businessman qualities to share his gospel. Right? And then Luke. Luke is a physician. He talks about women. Right? He talks more about women than anybody else in the Bible. So what does he talk? He talks about the virgin birth. Doctor tells uh, the people that yes, a virgin, she, she gave birth to a uh, uh, Why? God is telling, you are a doctor, yes, you are a doctor. Now I want you to adjust your thinking according to my word. In my world, in my world, the creation happens in a different way, Luke. So I will keep you, I'll keep your uniqueness, but I want you to adjust your thinking according to what my kingdom functions. And so the doctor now adjusts his thinking. Right? Now he doctor, when you go to a doctor, what does he do? He writes a prescription, he says, go take this person and you will be healed. But now here he's seeing miracles when somebody touches the sickness is being healed. So he writes, doctor writes that yes, when you pray, there is there is a healing. Right? When you come to John, it's a different different thing all, all together. God maintains John's uniqueness, the closeness with him, and then he writes it in a totally different gospel altogether. What do we learn from this? I'm taking time to explain certain uh, principles to you. God wants to maintain your originality always, and in your own unique, original way, God is going to use you. God is, sorry, God is, God, God, God is going to make you function. Using is a, is a, is a that, uh, that this, uh, you, your influence is unique and uh, in, a, in a different way. That's what I, so maintain, while maintaining your, while maintaining your originality, God, uh, God uh, uses uh, the influence of the kingdom to touch, touch, touch people. Uh, so, we worship, we praise, uh, we praise. The Holy Spirit is, uh, I told you many times, the Holy Spirit is in us for me, Holy Spirit is upon me for you, for others. That is the, that is the difference. Uh, and uh, he wants to, uh, he wants, and everyone has a ministry. Psalm 16, 11. We'll close in a few minutes. Uh, I know it is a stretch, but I want to get this uh, thing uh, very clear to you. Uh, Psalm 16, verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In your presence is the fullness of joy. In Nehemiah also, I don't remember the verse, he says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right? Yes, yes or no? Yes. So what is your strength? The joy of the Lord. What is your strength? The joy of the Lord. Say everyone, what is your strength? The joy, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That is your strength. Now, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, you are? And I am? So, is that difficult to understand? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, uh, okay, we read that the God has uh, uh, in His presence there is fullness of joy. That means there is joy, but if you want to, to experience fullness of joy, you need to be in His presence. Acts 3.21 Acts 3.21 Acts 3.21 Whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of, a, of his holy prophet since the world began. Please understand that each one of us need to have this times of restoration. I'll explain to you more on 31st. But uh, uh, here, each one are entitled for the times of, refresh, uh, of uh, uh, restoration and refreshment. And uh, refreshing. So, Please church, know this, in this church and people whom God has entrusted me, 
I want each one to be fruitful. And I want each one to be actively involved in the relation with the Holy Spirit. Actively involved. I want each one to ask the Holy Spirit and, and really seek the Holy Spirit and say, God, you have to make me fruitful. Everyone. I don't have a job. I need a job. In your kingdom, there is no one who is not fruitful. I need it. I need it. And whatever you give me, and it, it will it will increase. So I'm telling you, man, whatever whatever God has given you, now in the kingdom of God, it will always be fruitful. Right? It will always be fruitful. Say I am fruitful. I'm fruitful. Because, because the kingdom of God is given me. Kingdom of God is given me. Right? This is the reason for you to be fruitful. And this will be the only reason for you to be fruitful. This will be the only only reason. Then, so if <clears throat> let's move into communion because that is to bring the communion. The time of uh, restoration is here. Everyone, be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Be restored to what God has created you for. What what God has made you for. If the time of restoration or refreshing doesn't come, you are not engaging with His presence. Not that He has left you, but that you and I are not living with a conscious of His uh, presence. You are not living in that. Joy is the greatest manifestation of God in man's life. I want each one. That's the reason I keep telling, don't be crybabies. When things are happening, when things are not happening, do not cry, do not sulk, do not frown. The reason why, why is because the in His presence, right? When uh, God was talking to, uh, when, uh, in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah's face was, his countenance was low. And the king asked him, what is it that, uh, why are you not happy? Why you are in my presence? So please know, you, are, you and I are in the presence of the king and God wants each one to rejoice. Each one to rejoice. We are all the part and the unique part of the kingdom of God. As we close, I want each one to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. If I am not strong, what does it mean? What does it mean? If I am not strong, what does it mean? That means something happened to my joy. Joy is the central expression of the kingdom of God. The central expression. And it talks about the presence of the Holy Spirit in each one of us. Just look at it. Go back to the, uh, the, the image. What is your self-image? What is, if you want to take a selfie, whenever you take a selfie, right? Whenever you take a selfie, just check. How many of you have taken selfies? Yeah? What do you see in a selfie? What do you see in a selfie? Now look and say, do this person who has taken a selfie, who is in that, in that image, is he dead to sin? Does he have righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit? Right? Otherwise there is nothing to smile about looking at your selfie. I see many, many people, look at the new, uh, new dress selfie, DP, right? New, uh, new something. Wherever you go to a place, they, they take a selfie and then put it put it on that. Something new uh, items and food items, they take they take that image and then put it that I am eating a new new thing and they can take a selfie about this. How about taking a real analysis of uh, your own self? No, and how many of you? I want to see. You. I watch all your DPs. Don't think that I'm not watching. I watch every one of yours. I want to see. This time when I see, it says, hey, this is the man, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. This 
is the kingdom of God and this kingdom is within me. That is why I'm, I'm, my selfie is what I am putting as, a, as everyone to see. Right? What I am seeing, I am telling, I said, this is what I have and this is what I give to you. Right? And pray that everyone who sees this now will ask the question, what is it that you have and I don't have? What is it that you have and I don't have? That's the question. Let people ask you. Let people ask you that question. What is it that you have and I don't have? Then tell, it's the kingdom of God. Do you want it? Do you want the kingdom of God? Yes. yes. And No. <laughs> Let people ask and you, you tell people. I'm not asking you. Do you want the kingdom of God? I believe that you have the kingdom of God. Right? I'm not asking you a question whether you have it or not. I know you have, and now it needs to it needs to come out. It needs to come out. Express what God has already given given to you. There is no lack in that, and don't 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 stay. Right? A famous preacher uh, asked uh, asked uh, his, uh, somebody came to him, and then he asked, uh, "Brother, I'm under a lot of pressure." So he asked him, "What are you doing under it?" <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I'm under a lot of pressure. Come on. Right? Come on. Or I'll help you come out. I'll help you come out. Come on. Right? Be always that person who will take out, take, stretch his hand and then brings you, brings you out. For that is the reason God has God has made you. Don't look at suffering and do nothing about it. Don't look, don't do that. Respond. Respond to the need of people. Respond to the need of people. Have the heart of Jesus Christ. Respond. You see people in sin, give your hand, pull them out. Right? Give you. You see people under oppression, rebuke them, break the demon of, 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 of that is oppressing them. Bring them, bring them out. Bring them out. That is what I want expect from each one of you. When the, the body and the blood comes to you, make this, make this. Speak these words. Consider yourself dead to sin. Sin has no dominion over me. I'm dead. Right? So there is no temptation. You are dead to sin. This is what Bible tells about you. So don't come back and to, uh, and to me. I'm telling you, especially uh, in this church, I don't want you to come and and uh, and talk about uh, small petty things. We na gilda do, ame na gichindi. I mean, grow up, right? You have a problem with that sister, go and tell, be honest, go on your own. Go on, bend down and say, sister, I have a problem with you today. Settle it, in Jesus' name. Finish. That's maturity. You have a problem with me, come to me and say, you are a fool. I will correct myself. If I need an explanation, I will tell. If I made a mistake, I will ask sorry. Tell me. Tell me. I don't want anyone, any one of you to have any bitterness against each other. Anyone. Because that is what is the is devil uses to come and spoil your life, tear your life apart. In this way, if you have any problems with anyone, before you break the bread today, right? Because you are going to, this is the torn flesh of Jesus Christ. The moment I break this bread, it becomes the torn flesh of Jesus Christ. The moment I pray for this, or this, this, this comes to you, it's the blood of Jesus that comes to you. This is, this is what it is. Why was this torn? To set us all free. Right? Yes. Once this is your whole, you are, you are, you are holding the torn flesh of Jesus Christ in your hands. I'm telling you, church, walk up to the person. If you have a difference, walk up to the person. Sit beside, stand beside her, stand beside him. Neutralize it, right? I'm telling you again. I will rather touch my brother's feet than allow devil to be, devil to win over me. I prefer that. They are greater than the devil anytime. If I have a difference with Satish, I will go touch his feet. Then give place to the devil. 
Because Satish is always greater than the devil. He's great. Always great. That is how I want this church to be. That is how I want your life to be. You should be able to tell, you are greater than the devil. I am telling you sorry, because you are greater than the devil. Now, we will pray. I am sure the hearts, God has spoken to you, I am sure, challenging you to change. God, I pray for each one. I pray that each one, every family that is represented here, I pray, Father, that every stronghold around them be broken. That each one will manifest to God. Lord, uh, Lord will manifest, will manifest to God what you have put inside them. The kingdom of God that is there inside them because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, begins to manifest. And each one, Lord, each one, Lord, grow in you, God. Thank you. I commit each one to your spirit and to your word of God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. May the love of God the Father, the empowering grace of Son Jesus Christ, the sweet communion, comfort, counsel, guidance, and the strength of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.